call into my PBX with a designated number. And hang up after hearing the ringtone. The callback feature means my PBX will call back this number. The call fees will be borne by the trunk in my PBX that makes the call. Let's see how to configure callback settings. Click callback settings under internal settings. If allow all numbers is ticked, my PBX will call back all incoming external numbers. To configure a specific number, click add callback number and enter the desired number. Pay attention to the number entered here. It should be identical with the one showed in call logs when this number calls into my PBX. Also ensure the trunk used to call back have caller ID function. Creating callback rules is for the purpose of calling back through a specific trunk by adding or stripping digit while dialing the caller ID of the callback number. For instance, the caller ID is 6500306, and by default, the trunk PSTN1 requires to prefix 0 before calling. In this case, we need to prepend 0 before dialing. If the trunk does not require strip or prepend rule, then there is no need to create a callback rule. Next, go to the inbound route to enable callback feature. Callback setting is completed. Auto provision facilitates users to configure IP phones in bulk right in the web interface. This feature saves time substantially when a large number of IP phones need to be configured. At present, the feature supports several major IP phone brands like eLink, Snom, Polycom, Cisco. Astra, Grandstream, Easing, and Fanwheel. Phone provisioning provides PNP mode and DHCP mode. Let's see PNP mode first. E-Link and Snom IP phones support this mode. Before configuring an IP phone, please log in the interface of the phone and make sure the PNP has been enabled. PNP configuration is generally enabled by default. Go back to the phone provisioning page. General settings for eLink, general settings for Astra and PhoneBook, if needed, have to be configured before provisioning. The data created will be sent to IP phones together with the provisioning data. Click the refresh button under not configured phone. An IP phone that are connected to the system will be found. Choose the IP phones and click the button Configure the selected phones. Select the MAC address of the phone. Phone type, line, and extension. If you are configuring e-link phone whose phone with subversion number is higher than 70, new config should choose yes. But only the MyPBX whose phone with subversion number is higher than 17 has this option. If you cannot have new config chosen due to low MyPBX version, upgrade firmware to the latest version. Configure the rest of the options as needed. Click Add. Other IP phones we have selected are configured in the same way.
Click Save and reboot the phones as the prompt says. After the phones restart, open the line status page. We will find the phones were registered successfully as the phone icons are blue. We can also upload a configuration file. Configuration files in the format of CFG are supported by my PBX. Contact your phone provider for details of creating a configuration file. Configuration process in DHCP mode is the same with PNP mode, except that PNP does not need to be enabled. But my PBX has to be the only DHCP server in the local network. And the IP phones must enable obtain an IP address automatically. DHCP of IP phones are generally enabled by default. As DHCP is all set, auto provisioning can be conducted next. Under DHCP mode, you can also upload a configuration file. Call recording feature of my PBX can record all types of internal and external calls. My PBX U500, U510, and U520 have built-in call recording feature. And call recording in U100, U200, and U300 is an add-on that requires activation and an external USB device. Take U200 as an example. Click Add on and install. Enter the activation code you purchased and reboot the system to take effect. After activation, insert the USB device to the USB port of U200. Back to the login page of MyPBX, enter the monitor account to manage the recording files. The storage format of the USB device is not supported by MyPBX so you need to format USB device in the configuration page. Enter recording settings. Click Yes to enable. Choose the call type to record. You may allow record inbound, allow record outbound, allow record internal, and allow record callback. Then choose the trunk. Choose all trunks to apply to all. Choose Customized, then you can move the trunk needed to the right. As for extensions, Choose All and Customize are also available. Save the settings.
My PPX will now record the calls accordingly. The recording files can be checked in record logs. You could also configure share settings so as to check the files on other computers in the local area network by accessing the share folder. Take share the call recording files on the network. Name the share folder. And fill in the username and password. Save the settings. Now we can access the share folder on other computers. In the address bar, fill in double backslash and the IP address of my PBX. Enter the username and password in the window. If the operating system is Vista, Win7 or Win8, please follow the steps below before accessing the share. On the Start menu, in the search box, enter RegEdit and press Enter. Find this registry. If it doesn't exist, create one. Right click on the registry and choose modify. Change the value data to 1. My PBX has the default gateway, which means when accessing external network, the gateway is used. In some cases, like when SIP service providers would require web port connection, but my PBX cannot access external network through SIP provider network. So LAN port needs to be connected to another network for accessing external network. When WAN and LAN are both enabled, the former is the default gateway. That's why we need to configure static route to make equipment accessing external network except SIP providers to use LAN port. For example, the WAN gateway, i.e. the default gateway, is this. And the LAN gateway is this. Click Static Root under Network Setting. First, we set the LAN port as the default gateway. In the destination, Fill in 0.0.0.0 and the subnet mask the same, indicating all external IP address. In gateway, fill in this. Leave the metric blank if you don't know what to fill in. In interface, choose LAN. Click Add. The rule created will show in the routing table. Generally, there is no need to add WAN routing. Only when the registration IP of SIP provider is not in the same network segment with WAN port IP is it needed. For instance, fill in the destination subnet mask and gateway
and choose when as the video shows, then add the rule. VLAN, or virtual local area network, is used by some enterprises internally. Depending on what type of VLAN is set up, some requires configuration on client-side equipment. Enter the VLAN settings page. We will connect VLAN over LAN. So take number one to edit. Fill in the VLAN number VLAN IP address, etc. provided by Network Administrator. Click Save and reboot the system. VPN or Virtual Private Network is broadly used by enterprises to set up private network or to translate network address. The type of VPN supported by MyPPX is OpenVPN. Enable VPN in MyPPX, it can access branch office of a company, and IP phone of the branch office can also remotely register on MyPPX. MyPPX models accept Soho with the subversion number and the rest higher than 13.0.87 support open VPN feature. My VPX is on the client side, so get client configuration file from your open VPN provider. Or generate a configuration file on your open VPN server. Consult your service provider for configuration of server side. Use the OpenVPN configuration file for Linux. Uncomment the field of user and group in the file. Under Linux, compress the file into tar format. Open the VPN settings page, enable VPN. Click Browse to find a tar configuration file. Import the file and reboot my PPX. The VPN connection status can be tracked in the system info page later.